So, today I think you guys are into stairs, right? That's where Stephen had you. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about stairs. Um, we're going to go through the construction, a little bit of stairs, terminology of stairs. We're going to do stairwell calculations and finding the angles of the stairs. So, something that everyone here should have done already. Just kidding. How many of you guys are home builders? Work with house builders. How many of you built stairs? Oh, I haven't built stairs. Anyone here figure out how to get your rise and run out of, out of a set of stairs? Yeah. A couple of you? All right. So if you guys read your material yesterday, or last night, or some of it, went through your carpentry textbook, went through your module, you would have seen in there, there's some stairwell calculations and stair, and how to find your rise and run of stairs. Uh, what we have in here is exactly what you guys read, so it won't be anything, shouldn't be anything brand new. Um, so we'll continue on. So stairs, we have, uh, Ugly stairs, this is what you'd see in a brand new house probably after you're done painting. <laughs> so we would pretty them up with a little bit of laminate, hardwood, carpet, whatever, sand them down, make them look good. So we got ugly to beautiful. Anyone ever work or see a set of stairs like this before? I did. <laughs> I have been in a, on a, a job site where we built, we didn't actually build them, but we were part of the install team that built or installed a set of stairs in a nice round area just like that. It was pretty neat. Only ever done it once. Um, but yeah, it was pretty fun. We got the ridiculous. Where would you guys find something like this? Vancouver? Art studio. <laughs> yeah, Vancouver. Some artsy fartsy little condo or apartment or something. And then we got to the overly useful. Now Stephen was just talking about these this morning in our thing, but uh, where would you find something like this? <laughs> Tiny home, probably, something on wheels, somewhere you need a ton of a storage. You think you'd be allowed to build these by code? Why not? Are they well, stairs are generally hollow, right? So, yeah, you could probably build something similar to this and still be code compliant. But there's some problems there. The hammer doesn't come down far enough. Exactly, I was just Gonna point that out. Yep. Oh, what else is missing? The handrail doesn't come down far enough. Oh, how wide is those stairs? What's over here? There's nothing. Uh, there. Nothing there. You fall right off. But you land on the drawers, you'd be okay. Or yeah. Floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, as long as you follow the rules, drag a handrail down here. You would need another handrail up here, but you could build them. There's no reason why you can't. Go back this way. So, code part 98 stairs, ramps, handrails, and guards, and 9891 construction. This is where we're going to find all of our stair stuff that we need to comply with code. So, if you guys are designing your set of stairs, what's the first thing you want to think of when you're designing or about to build your set of stairs? The, the height for the Platform. Well, that's one of the things we have to consider, but what's the first thing you want to make sure that you know, the homeowner is going to be when you're building your set of stairs? Happy, safe. Okay. Safety. You guys went through safety when? Way back in 81. Safety is the first thing we consider when we're building a set of stairs. If they're not safe, they're no good, right? So you want to go through safety, you want to make sure they're comfortable, because um, there's nothing worse than having a set of stairs built and then the homeowner not liking them and then you're there after everything's done cutting them out and replacing them. How'd you do it? No. Uh, it's not fun, trust me, when you're trying to do something like that. So as we continue on, we got types of stair configurations. We have a double L. Where would you think this would be? Where would you find this in a house? Uh, well, I would think that these would be, uh, you would find something like this, where it would be open on one side. You would come up, it would be a nice open rail, you'd have some windows in here, crawling up to your next set of stairs, up to your second floor, nice banister coming across here, open to below. That's where I would find something like that. How about just a, 
an L set of stairs is just kind of a generic type stairwell you'd find in any everyday kind of home, right? Basement up, one landing, turn, away you go. Same with these, a U set of stairs, you would find these in an apartment building, just repetitively up, 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 or you'd find this in, what kind of house would you find these in? If you're building a house, maybe a split level. Split house, split level. Split level, yep, split entrance home, you come in, boom, basement, <coughs> main floor, hundreds of those houses built all the time. I built tons of them, Fort Nelson, Dawson Creek. And what about these? This is a W. You think that would be allowed by code today? Double set of winders in a single flight of stairs? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I thought I'd never even. Yeah, I, I don't think you're allowed two sets of winders in a single flight of stairs. It's not, it's not legal. What would happen if you fell from here and started going down these set of stairs? Would you ever stop when you hit the bottom? Probably not. It's dangerous. So a set of winders for one single flight of stairs. Um, and also these don't meet code anyway because they come to a point. Uh, we're not going to talk about winders, we're just going, I just wanted to have that one in there just to show you guys. But if we're looking in the code book, what would be the maximum vertical height for any flight of stairs? 3.7 3.7 meters, that's right. So what does that mean? Uh, the total of the prize. Yeah, you can't have a flight of stairs run any more than 3.7 meters in height. Doesn't matter what, private, public, does anywhere. That, does that mean it main 3.7 meters uh, stringer length, or? No, it'd be the height. The height. The height. The height. Okay. The vertical very, height. Very it can't be any more than 3.7 meters. Where'd you find that? Module. But where in your code book would you find it? That's a code question. Uh, the code tells us that we cannot be any more than 3.7 meters. What's the number? Three. Pardon me? 8933. The vertical height. 9833? Yeah, 9833. Right. Vertical height, no more than 3.7 meters. So you can build your stairs up to 3.7 meters. How tall is that in feet? Anybody? 7 feet or something? Pardon me? 7 feet? No, it'd be more than 7 feet. 10 meters or 3 meters is. 10 feet. Yeah, just over 12 feet. 12 foot 1 and 11 sixteenths or something is, is what it is. So if you're giving your version back, your stairs can't be any more than 12 feet in height. And you would need to add a landing in at some other height. Stair terms. Uh, we went through some configuration and now we'll just go through some terms uh, with the stairs. This picture you would find in your textbook, unit or in chapter 37, that I kind of wrote on the board yesterday for you guys. Um, if we're going through the stair terms, number one, what would this be? Total Pardon me? Total rise. Total rise. Total rise is measured from where? Finished floor to finished floor. Finished floor to finished floor. Someone has been reading this. Yes. <laughs> Number two, what would number two be? I'm not, I don't know. Total run. Total run. How do you figure out your total run? Anybody? Very last step to same point here. Yeah, right from right from here to here. Total run. Okay. I know this is an in here, but this line across here is called our nose line. Yeah, it's your imaginary nose line. Uh, what do we got? Number three. What would we call this right here, number three? Rise or rise. A rise would be our unit rise. rise. Unit rise right here. And number four would be? Unit run. Unit run. Unit run. Number five? It's pointing just stringer. Stringer. Or? Carriage. Carriage. Or? Horse. <laughs> Cut carriage, whatever. Uh, 
All right, six. What do we call this right here? It's that number six is the, is the area between our uh, our notch and the bottom of our stringer, the edge of our stringer. The effective section. The effective depth oh, is what we call this. Uh, number eight, we got right here. Nosing. It's our nosing. Nine is? Headroom. That's right. And ten? Opening. Stairwell opening. And eleven is just pointing to this piece of material right here. Which one? It's our tread. You, yeah. You change. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's touchy. So 11 would be our tread. So when we go through our stairs, our first thing we need to figure out is the height of our stairs. So we always measure from finished floor to finished floor. And then we can figure everything else out from there. We need to find our unit rise, our unit run. We can find the length of our stringer. We can find our, our total run, which is critical when we're building our stairs because we need to have a, a stairwell opening here that's probably pre-built. So we need to know where our stairs lie, and that will determine whether or not we can have a code minimum set of stairs or a nice, relaxed rise and run that's really nice and comfortable. Um, because sometimes we'll also have a wall right here, so we're kind of trapped into what we're doing. So that would be a trapped run. So. Sorry, here we go. Here's all of the terms back um, where we decided on the last page what they were. So as we go through this, we have an, an effective depth. What would that be? Anybody? It's in your code book. Open up your code book. Go to 989, the end, near the end, where the construction part is. Depends on your experience. No, it doesn't. There is an effective depth, and we cannot be any deeper. Oh, it cannot be any less than the effective depth. How much you need to leave? Yep. Yep. And that will depend on our. 90 millimeters. Pardon me? 90 millimeters. 90 millimeters. This effective depth. This effective depth cannot be any less than 90 millimeters or three and a half inches. 35. Where did you find that? Uh, 935. Page. Page. And the code number is? 9894. 9894. Well, that's the depth from the corner of the... Yep, that is... The run to the... Or it makes a triangle. Yep, this right here. Yeah. This, this area right here, from here to here, oh, has okay. to be measured at that. Measured like that has to be 90 millimeters. If it isn't, then you have to either go to a deeper material. So two by, if you're using a two by 10, you could go to a two by 12, or you could take a two by four and nail it um, right flush with the bottom of your, where your riser and, and tread meet, and, and then it would hang down and you would meet code if you're using a 2 by 10 And that's strong enough? You, that's strong enough. You just stab it on? Yeah, you bet. It's full length, and it gives you your effective depth. You can do that. That is um, compliant with code. I prefer to go to a 2 by 12 every time I build a set of stairs because it's just a better, stronger set of stairs. Um, we have headroom, private and public. What's private? Oh. Yeah, in a house, within a dwelling unit. And public would be anywhere like a commercial building or the building we're in right now. In our code book, what does it tell us that we have to leave for headroom, code minimums, private and public? You're going to find that probably near the beginning of the code, uh, stairs 9-8. Someone from the middle maybe can give me an answer. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, a private home. 
clearing site over land and serving a dwelling shall not be less than 1.95 meters. Yep, for private is 1950, and public would be, it sh they should both be right in the same. Uh, 205. Yeah, 2050. So you get a little more in a public area, or in a public area, and in a house minimum, 1950. Uh, that's minimum. Whenever we're building anything to minimum code, anybody know what we're building? The worst possible product allowed. <laughs> that is allowed. So if you're building a house to code minimums, stairs to code minimum, anything to minimum code, remember you're building the worst possible product that's allowable. So we always try to build above code uh, minimums, and then you'll have a good product at the end of the day. Uh, in 20 years of building, 15 years of having my own home warranty, I have yet, knock on wood, to ever have a callback when I was building. So that's something I take pride on because we always built beyond and above what the code book told us to build. So everything was built, um, everything was built right. Maximum nosing. Can anybody find that? This will be a tricky one. It's going to be right at 9.8. It's going to be right where your rise and run minimum maximums are. Um, but this one is a tricky one to find. You need to know your maximum, what you're allowed for a maximum nosing um, on your stairs. And it might not say nosing, but it will say, um, it will give us, pardon me? No, it shouldn't have this too much. Pardon me? 25 millimeters? 25 millimeters, yes. If you look in your code book in 9842, it says dimension for rectangular treads, and you're looking at subsection 2, it will tell us the depth of our tread can be so deep plus 25 millimeters. So that is where you would find that. And in there, it also gives us our minimum maximums. So if we're over here, what's our, for private, what is our minimum rise and our minimum run? 125. 125? What's our maximum rise? 200. 200. It says in the code book, 14 millimeter measured horizontally from the front of the nose. That is for radius, that is for a radius on your nosing. You can only have a radius that will take 14 off. Oh. Um, but our rectangular tread, we are reading that, is the depth of the rectangular tread shall be not less than the run and not more than the run plus 25 millimeters. That is our maximum nosing allowability. What's our minimum run for private? going to be up on the next page. 255. 255. Maximum? 335. Right. So those are some minimum maximums. If we are building probably the most comfortable set of stairs you're going to build are going to be a rise of 180 and a run of 250 somewhere in that area. Um, or 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven, so 7-inch rise, 11-inch tread. That gives us a nice 32 and a half degree angle, which is preferable, but hard to achieve um, when you're building a house and you have a stairwell that's opening into a hallway. Something that, end, that ends near a hallway that you cannot start changing once you start building. So these are a lot of things that you have to plan before you even start. So we went through some of the code with our stringers and our treads, our maximum rise, our maximum runs. Let's talk about our stringers. Usually cut in pairs or threes. You're only allowed so far, um, you're only allowed so much distance in between your stringers. So 900 mils maybe are maximum on center spacing. Depending if you're using um, a closed riser, uh, you can get away with 750 mil on center spacing. Um, but 900 is generally our minimum spacing for our stringers. So 
they must have an effective depth of 90 mils. We went through that. And an overall depth of uh, no less than 235. So 235 is a 2 by 10. So minimum uh, stringer we're allowed to have is a 2 by 10. Stringers can be cut, which is generally what you're going to see in the field. They can be dadoed, cleated, housed, solid, semi-housed, miter, or laminated. I don't know if you've seen in the shop the curved stairs that are in there, but that would be a laminated stringer. Uh, many, like thin material, all glued together, and then glued together and laminated to a curve. You guys do that in fourth year. If you get through this first. No. <laughs> So we have notch stringers. Here's some of the dimensions for the notch stringer. So remember, 235, 2 by 10 is the minimum of material we're allowed to use. We have semi-housed. Anyone know what a semi-housed stringer is? It's a cut stringer with a stringer or a, another 2 by 10 put onto the side of it. So it makes it look like a housed stringer. Anyone see a housed stringer? Yeah. So it kind of gives you that same look, but without, uh, yeah, without all the work. No, <laughs> it's a lot of work to build a housed stringer. We have cleated stringers. So just stairs with, uh, we just put cleats on at our rise and run and nail some treads onto them. Nice. Dado stringers. Make a template with your router and start dadoing in all your treads. And we have mitered stringers. Now a mitered stringer is a flat cut across the top and a 45 down your riser. Has anyone seen mitered stringers before? No, well generally when we're open to one side, that's how we do it. So if you have a nice space along open side to your stairwell, open railing going up, you would have a mitered stringer on there, so you have a nice wood across your riser, mitered, your riser would be mitered to your stringer, or to a faceboard that you'd be nailing onto the side of it. And that's, that riser would return all the way around, and so would your tread. And you would end up with a nice finished edge that everyone would see, exposed one side. And then this is... Fully housed. This is a house set of stairs. You build a template with your rise and run on it, and the back side is angled out slightly, so your treads and risers are held in with wooden wedges. And you pound those wedges in so they're tight. You would dado your rise, you would dado your tread and your riser so they are accepted into each other, all glued, wedged, put together. These take some time to build. You guys probably, I think you do them next year, second year, fully housed, so get ready. So then I can stringer be on like both sides? You can do this both sides, oh, okay. or you can do a cut stringer on one side and a housed stringer on the other, okay. or you can do a housed stringer with a mitered stringer. You can do any kind of uh, combination that you'd like, but it doesn't have to be housed on one side and housed on the other. Oh, okay. So. How deep can you cut into the stringer? Like they it out like that? Um, half an inch. Or half an inch. Yeah, half inch. All right, house stringer. Have fun with those next year. No. <laughs> uh, we'll go into risers and treads. So we have our treads and our oops. And our risers, what kind of combination do you think this would be? Would this be fully housed, semi-housed? Semi Pardon me? Semi-housed. Yeah, I don't see any wedges or anything in there. It looks like it would be a semi-housed set of stairs to me. So rise. So this has changed. Um, this has changed since this has been done. So our max rise is 200 mils. Min, minimum rise is 125. That has stayed the same, right? Yeah. When we went through our code book, 180, most comfortable. Uh, if you do the conversion on 180 mils, what do you get? So if you go back to inches, let's do conversion, quick conversion. 180 back to inches, we seven, get? Seven inches. Yeah, seven inches. So seven inches is 
the most comfortable rise you can get. But remember, when you're building a house and they have a conventional basement and then they're using two by 10 floor system, all that can change when you go to build your house, when you go to an ICF basement and then you do a engineered floor system because you're getting more height. So out of it, then your stairwell can't always, you can't extend your stairwell all the time. So a lot of times when you're building, you're gonna to have to change that to a seven and a half inch rise and a 10 inch run, so they're gonna be steeper. Uh, but we always try to achieve 180 because it is the most comfortable when you're climbing your stairs. All rise should be the same, but the BC building, uh, BC building code allows 10 mils in the rise of any two steps and only five mils in the rise or run between adjacent steps. So over a whole set of stairs, you can have a five mil variance, not on every step, but throughout the whole stair construction, okay? Our run, so maximum run for private stairs is 355, and the minimum is changed to? 255. 255, right. <clears throat> 250, most comfortable for treads, can be a little longer um, for people with big feet. Yeah, <laughs> and that's going to change now to 255 too, I guess. Yes, this will have to change, yeah. yeah. You can't go 250 anymore. No, this would have to change to 255. Just going through the code book, um, some of this stuff has just changed within the last year. Uh, lumber must be a minimum of 25 millimeter actual thickness if open risers and stringers exceed 20, 750 millimeters between them then the thickness must be increased to 38 mils uh, in thickness. What's an open riser? Anybody? Like through the stairs. Yeah, see right through the stairs. We saw that back with those cleated stairs. And if you're building an exterior set of stairs for a deck, you ever put riser boards on them? No, we're just usually generally using a couple of two by uh, six deck boards, making an 11 inch tread and, and everything's open, right? Okay, so this has all changed, I guess. <laughs> but the concept stays the same. So if our minimum run is 255, that's right, 255. Wow, that's big. Mm -hmm. That's a big run to be a minimum. Um, a 25 millimeter nosing is required to make the minimum tread width. <laughs> so it's got to be bigger, right? Um, why don't we just use these numbers instead of reinventing the wheel here? So if we have a minimum run of 210, we use a 25 mil nosing is required to make the minimum tread width of 235 or 255, right? So we have to have a minimum tread width of 255 mils. So if our stringer is cut to 210 or whatever it is, it has to be, you have to create that nosing to make that minimum tread depth. Now, this nosy can get smaller than 25 millimeters, but it can't get any greater than 25 millimeters according to code, right? Where did we find that in the code book? Uh, part nine. Part nine, what's the number? Did it be nine eight? Nine four. Nine four. Two two. Two? two? Yeah. Right. That's where it tells us. We cannot be any greater than 25 <coughs> millimeters from our, from our run. So it can keep going down. So if this was actually, if we had a unit run of 235 or 255, uh, we would not need a nosing at all. We could be flat. And as we get larger, we don't require a nosing, but we can add a nosing to make our stair tread to its maximum run, which is? 355. 355. That's right. So if the maximum unit run is 355, you can use a no. Uh, uh, a nosing is not allowed as the maximum tread width is 355, right? So if we're less than 355 and we want 355, then we can add a nosing as long as that nosing is not any longer than an inch or 25 mils. So this has changed in our code book, but the concept is still the same. 
as long as you are building a minimum tread and you, you can add a nosing to it, or if you're at your maximum tread, there's no nosing required. So your nosing or your tread can't exceed 355? Not exceed 355. Now it's tough to get a 355 mil tread in, in, ho in house in residential construction. That's 14 inches. Mm -hmm. You need a giant stairwell or an open stairwell with nothing, nothing trapping it, which is hard to do um, when you're building a house, especially a smaller um, house, you're doing a nice big house with an open concept and your stairs are wide out, wide, <clears throat> wide open out in the middle of something, then yeah, you can probably get away with a big tread like that, but that's huge. Have you ever, have you ever been on a 14 inch tread? No, me neither. Unless I'm, unless you're out uh, climbing a set of stairs up to, um, out in public, they have really long treads and a low rise and, and away you go up, really long set of concrete stairs, but you never find anything, a 14 inch tread in, <laughs> in a house, that'd be a tough one. Tough to get that kind of room. So here we have some guidelines for stair proportioning rules. These, guys, these guidelines are designed um, to make stairs comfortable and safe. So these are just, guide, these are not code, but this is a guideline. So rise and run would equal 17 inches, so one rise, plus one run, 17 inches. That's probably the most comfortable set of stairs. Um, or 7-Eleven, you can go anywhere between 17 and 18 inches. Or 440 to 450 millimeters. So one rise plus one run, between would give us 440 or 450, that would be a comfortable set of stairs. And now you can do that after you find your rise you can subtract your rise from 440, 450, or 17 inches, and that will give you your run, and then you can build your stairs from there. The number size may determine the tread on an exterior set of stairs. So exterior set, we're building a deck. Two treads at five and a half inches equal 11. How many people here are building in the north? Meaning right here? Like, this like up here, up in this area. Oh, yeah. All right, so how many of us grab treated wood and it's soaking wet? Yeah. It's just drenched. So in the north, a good practice when you're building in drier climates or if you're building actually down on the island or in Vancouver or wherever where it's, sorry, not dry, but where it's moist, you'd want to leave a quarter inch gap in between your deck boards or your stair treads because you need somewhere for the rain to go, and if, it's, if you're down south, that wood can probably swell a little tighter. Up here, who puts quarter-inch gaps in between their deck boards? It's going to end up being half-inch gaps. Yeah, it would end up being a half-inch gap. It's so dry here, all that moisture uh, is sucked out of that material, and it shrinks. So when you put it tight, you shrink to a quarter-inch. So here, I took the quarter-inch, I did put a quarter-inch into... Um, into this, but generally, depending on where you're building, so know your climates. If you're building in a high humidity area or where it's wet, yeah, leave a quarter inch gap in between your material. Up here, keep it tight because it is going to shrink, and by the time that you put a quarter inch gap and then it shrinks again, you're going to have a huge half inch gap in between your material, and it looks like dog's breakfast. It's not very, <laughs> it's better. Keep it tight, and you'll be happy. So will your homeowners. They'll be like, wow, oh, that's tight, and then by the time it shrinks, it's Perfect. Preferred angle of stairs. Stairs fall between 30, 35 degrees. 17 inch rule gives us an angle of 35. Uh, and the 7-Eleven gives us 32 and a half degrees. That's why we consider that one the best because that is a very nice angle to climb. Um, but it's hard to achieve. Even 11 inch tread is hard to achieve when you are in a trap run. Um, and most houses that we build today, everything is probably a trapped run. I know that when I'm building a house, um, even for the college, we're always fighting to get a really nice, good, comfortable set of stairs. Sometimes we're at like a 200, almost maxed out on our rise, and then we only have a 10 inch run. So like we're talking minimum. <laughs> yes? What's a trapped run? A trapped run is where you're 
have your stairwell opening, but then down at the bottom you have a wall. So you're, you only have a certain amount of distance and you need to leave a certain amount of distance in between your stairs and that wall, which is the width of your stairs or three feet generally. Um, you need to leave at the bottom. So when you have a trapped run, you only have a certain amount of area where you can put your stairs in, right? So that is going to determine uh, your, the run of your stair. Headroom requirements, there's your Berkeley from the nosing line. Must be at least 1950 for private, 2050 for public. Um, they are minimums and rarely used. When we're building code minimums, what are we building? Worst. Yeah. The worst we're allowed. That's right. <laughs> we found this in the code book. Where did we find it? Somebody give me a number? It's going to be a 9 8 for sure. Yeah. Stairs is the only 98 one we're allowed. 9822. 9822. Minimum headrooms. What's 1950 in inches? 763 quarter for each. You're on the man. You're the man. <laughs> 76 three quarter. How tall is that? 7 foot or 6 foot. Which is 76? Yeah. 6 foot 4? 6 foot 4. Yep. 6 foot 4, 6 foot 5. Okay, so we were just talking about minimum maximum rise and slopes. So this one here between 30 and 35 degrees is our, is our most comfortable. But if we're doing old code minimum maximums, what would this give us? How would we figure this out for, first of all? How would we figure that out? Find the angle of that stair. <coughs> what are we going to use? Sokotoa. Sokotoa. We already have our numbers here. But we're going to use Sokotoa, so some old hippie <laughs> got another hippie tripping on acid. <laughs> so that's how I remember that one. No. <laughs> so we have, we have our um, high slope by code, 200 and 210. So on our triangle, what do we got on our triangle? So if we have, we have our hypotenuse, we have our adjacent, and we have our opposite, right? So what numbers do we got? 210, 200, oh, uh, Yeah, 200, 210. So what function are we going to use on our calculator? Oh. Pardon me? Oh. Yeah, we're going to use the tan. So we have 200 over 210, because it's opposite over adjacent, right? Now, that is going to give us a number that we're going to have to pull back. So we're going to have to use an inverse tangent function. So we're going to have to second function tan. So this will equal, I'm not sure what it equals. So give me a number. Point nine five. So you have your 0.95, you're going to do second function tan. 43.60. You end up with 43.60? Yeah. Degrees. So that gives us, by code, our highest slope, 43.6 degrees. That's a pretty steep set of stairs. Like, that would not be fun to be climbing every single day into your house. So if this one is recommended between 30 and 35, what would 180, 283 give us? So we have 180 here. Two eighty three. <coughs> this is not going to change. Using the same using the same process we just went through, what do we get for an angle on this set of stairs? We're still going to use the tangent function. We're still going to reverse five. it all back. 32 and a half. 32 and a half. Anybody, everybody else get that number? Yeah. All right. Lowest slope by code. 125 
355. What does that give us? Same thing. Doing the same. 19.4. This would be a tough one to build. But now that you got this angle, what is that going to help you find when you're cutting stuff for your stairs? Uh, your well, you can find your hypotenuse, yeah, but this angle, you can start cutting your handrails. You can start doing things off of this angle we have now found, right? So finding the angle of your stairs is very helpful when you're building a raked wall along your stairs for a half wall or um, putting your handrail, screwing your handrail to your wall or if you have an open rail. This is a good number to have. So remember, uh, when you have... When you're on your stairs and you're measuring up with your nosing lines and chalking a line and then just cutting everything off, if you have this angle already, you'll be able to find your heights and you'll be able to cut everything to that angle and you, it won't be such a nightmare trying to find it on a skill saw. Okay, so most comfortable, 32 and a half, 7 7.11, that's what we're trying to achieve. Not always achievable, uh, but that's what we're going for. Any questions so far? Uh, how, like, for the 7 other one, like, yep. how high would it come up, like, in the main house? Because it's like eight foot wall, right? If Normally. It from the basement to the... It's hard, it's hard to get, it's hard to achieve yeah. 7 11. A lot of times we're 7, uh, we're 7 and a quarter to 7 and a half to 7 and 3 quarter. It's like, oh, yeah. a lot of times it's really tough to get a 7 inch rise. Um, on an interior set of stairs. It's what we try to achieve, but we're gonna go through some stair, we're gonna go through some metric stair calculations here, and uh, everything's gonna be based off of a desired rise of 180 mils. So 180 mils is how many inches? Six. 180 mils? No. Seven. Oh. Seven inches. All right, so you guys have this? Kind of? All right. Good. Yeah, I'm sure it'll make sense as we go along. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Um, okay, so I just want to see something here. Okay, so we just went finding our slopes, and now we're going to start into finding our uh, actual rise and run of our stairs. So. In our stairs, we have a total rise, we have a total run, and we have a desired rise of 180 mils. When you're looking at blueprints, it's going to give you a rise, of a desired rise. 180 is always where I start with, or seven inch. If I'm measuring at my total rise, or from finished floor to finished floor, do you have finished floor to finished floor when you're in mid-construction of a house? No. No, so you, that's something you're going to need to know. What's going on the main floor? What's going in the basement? So we can make some adjustments um, to our total rise when we're designing our stairs. So we need our total rise. And we have our desired rise. So our, if we have a total rise of 2650 and we have a desired rise of 180, what we're trying to find here is how many risers do we have in our carriage here, or our stringer? Or how many risers is it going to take to get from the bottom, from the basement, to the top? 15. Pardon me? 15. 15. How'd you figure that out? That's right. That gives us 15. 15 risers. How many treads? One less. Always one less tread than riser because up here is our last tread, right? So the landing is our tread. Whenever we're building stairs and we're putting landings in, where do we put our landings? Would we put them halfway between a rise and a run? Or would we try to get our landing right with our last tread? That's So if we had a landing right here, would we put it here? No. Or would we put it oh, I... with a tread? Yeah, we'd always put it with a tread. So our landing or main floor or whatever is going to be our 15th tread. So one less riser, or one less tread than riser, 14 treads. So if we're gonna find our true rise or our unit rise, 
How do we go about doing that? Uh, Take our, our, our total rise and we're going to divide it by what? No, you rise. 15, 15? Yeah, by or the number of rises. Oh. And that's going to give us our actual unit rise that we can use in this uh. with this total rise. That's why it's hard to achieve seven, like, it's hard to achieve the perfect rise and run because it's always different. You could have a, a nine foot basement, you could have a 10 foot basement, you could have an eight foot basement, but then your heights are messed up because you're using different types of floor systems. So um, it's hard, it's really hard to get it so it's perfect. But if we take our total rise and divide it by our unit, our number of risers, that's gonna give us our unit rise of? 176.66 and it kind of goes on, right? So this 0.67 or 0.7 is gonna be tough to find on a, on a framing square, right? Where are you gonna find that in a millimeter? Where are you gonna find that on the framing square? So anything from five and up, we tend to round up. We want to round up. But how much are we allowed variation in our stairs? Five mils. So if, if this is 0.666 or 67 of a millimeter, what's it going to take us to get up to one mil? 0.4. Yeah, 0.4 or 0.33. So if we're going to round this up and we want five mil variation or no more than five mil variation, we would have to take the remainder of this and times it by 15. And that's going to give us what? Uh, 4.95. 4.95. We are on the cusp of these being not allowed, right? But we're still within code. We still meet it. So, And a lot of times, this when we round up, depending on where we cut, we might cut on the line. We might cut the line off, we might, it's just gonna work itself out by the time we're done cutting our carriage out anyway. So we don't really worry too, too much about it, but you know, kinda of wanna check when you're going through your stairs, you wanna make sure that you're still within that five mils. All right, so, oops, oh, ooh, ah, wrong way. So using the 450 rule, if we're at 177, because we're going around up, right? We can cross that out. Okay, we got a rise of 177. Using our stair proportioning rule of 450, that's going to give us our tread, or our unit run, whatever you want to call it, or our actual run. So to find that, we want to subtract 450 from 177. That'll give us our unit run, and that is? 273. So our actual run will be 273. So when we're cutting our stairs, we're going to cut 177, 273 when we're laying them out. Now that we have 273, how do we find our total run? We have our, we now have our tread times 14. Times 14. Times 14. Yeah, that's going to give us 3.82 meters. 3.82 meters. So two critical measurements we need. We need this one to figure out the height of our stairs, but we also need to know where our stairs are gonna land because you never know what's over here, right? We could have a wall sitting, you could figure this whole thing out using the proportion rule, be like, oh, these stairs are perfect, and then you go to measure and you got a wall right here. So, then you would have to adjust. You'd have to be like, oh, yeah, I'm go back and figure out what I'm going to do here for my treads. <laughs> so, so, um, and if that was the case, then you would have to measure from the wall back, and then you would have your run, and you would divide that by 14, um, and then it would give you a new actual tread length, tread depth. It, uh, you sometimes have to work backwards. So, we have a rise, 177, we have a run, 273, and the variation, we kind of figured that out, so we're within code, and does it need code? Yeah, yeah, these stairs need code. Now, any questions? Where did you get that 450 from? Yeah, what is the 450 rule? 450, so 450 is 
just a general proportion rule. If we go back, we go back, I thought we could go back. There we go. Um, I may have lost it. Nope. We go and find, <laughs> I may have lost it. There it is. Right here. So when we're talking about proportioning rules, we want our rise and run to equal 17 inches or 440 to 450. This is just a general rule of thumb. This is just for to make a comfortable set of stairs. So this is what we're trying to get to. This 450 or 17, 18 sometimes. I can generally, when I'm building a house and I'm building a set of stairs, I find my rise, I usually I'm, I'm usually stuck with a seven and a half inch rise. And then my run, I can figure out my run between 17 and 18 inches. I don't like to go any higher or lower than 17 and 18 inches. Um, but you can generally do it. So your proportioning rule, uh, rise, one rise plus one run, 17 inches, or 440 to 450 mils. That's what we're trying to achieve. This you will find in your, this will be all in your module tool. That there's different um, proportioning rules, but this one for me, I find to be the best. I use this one all the time when I'm building. Any questions? Uh, you had 15 risers, so you took yep. one away to get it with the landing? Like, yeah, well, whenever you, whenever you figure total height, your total rise, yeah. um, your stairs are always, you're always one less tread than riser. Oh, right yeah. here, because your stairs finish yeah. here, right? So if we have 15 risers, you only have 14 treads. Oh, okay. You're gonna be cutting them off as it goes. There, so as much. When you do your, uh, your uh, uh, rises and runs, and you got uh, the total run and you're closer to the wall, so how do you go from there? What do you like to fix that one? So if, you, if you're figuring this out and your wall is right here, yeah, right? right? Yeah. So we know exactly on the floor where we're going to be here. So if we level down from our main floor down, we know where our stairs are starting at this point, correct? Yeah. So if we have a wall and we're too tight here, according to the code, we need to have the distance our distance needs to be, so if our stairs are three feet wide, we need a minimum of three feet in front of our stairs. We need to be able, whatever our landing is, our, our, uh, whatever our stair width is, our landing has to, you need to be able to make an arc yeah. in there. So you would have to measure whatever the width of your stairs are, you'd have to add your drywall in there because that's yeah. part of the thickness. And you would measure back the width of your stairs Say it's three feet, say it's three foot six or 950 millimeters, whatever it is, you would then make a mark here and then you would have to measure back to where the point of your stairs where they, where your stairs are starting or ending, wherever they are right here, this point on your main floor or your landing, wherever your landing is. You then need to take this measurement because that's all you're allowed. Oh, and then you would divide that by 14, yeah. and then that would give you actually give you your the run you you could cut into your stairs. Yeah. That's called a trap run. That's trap run. Yes. Well, you said 17 inches is the ideal. Is there 18? Yeah, plus anywhere plus between 17 and 18 inches is plus ideal. Plus 7, 18, 7, 7 11, 7 and a half. Okay. Ten and a half. So that's where you you're seven rise, eleven run. That's what you mean. Yeah. So yeah. for your trap stairs, like on the bottom, like I'd say, like I remember you saying, like the width of your stairs could get the bottom. Yep. So if you got a twenty-four inch uh, tread, could that be like keep a landing on the bottom, or does that have to be a minimum three feet? Well, it has to be the, the width of the stairs. It has to be the width of your stairs. So a twenty-four inch stairs not allowed for starters. Oh, okay. You're only allowed, I think at 860 is our minimum width. Okay. Um, so yeah, but if you were allowed two feet, then yeah, you could have, I guess you could have a two foot okay. landing, 
but you still need to be three feet. Ah, uh, you have to be three feet. Three feet is code for our um, hallways. You would have, you'd have to be. Okay. Plus, if you're taking a wheelchair down those stairs, how would you make a corner? No. <laughs> <laughs> so for when you plumb down, is it to the to your header, or is it the part that your nose or piece? Yeah, right there. No, you, you come down right from your header, oh, okay. and then you're going to take that nosing into account anyway when mm -hmm. you're doing this. Okay. Make sense? Kind of? Should write the modules. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have one more thing we have to figure out in this whole nonsense of stairs that we got here. Your clearance site. We need to figure out our headroom requirement on here. So when we're figuring out our headroom, we already have our, we need to have our rise and run. What's minimum headroom? 1950 for, 1950 for private. And we also need to know our floor thickness because this stairwell opening isn't from here, even though that is our header requirement, we need our floor thicknesses, figure out our finished opening, and then we add 75 mils or three inches to get our rough opening. Why would we add three inches to our finished opening? To get a rough opening. We have finishes that we need to take into account. We have nosings, we have uh, finishes on this side over here. So if we just figure out to a finished opening and we start adding our nosings and we start adding drywall and whatever else we're adding to this wall, we start closing this finished opening up and then that's going to bring us out here somewhere. And then would we meet our headroom if we're figuring it out to minimum headrooms? No. So we always add three inches to our finished opening so we take care of that. So our, I guess our calculation is Run divided by rise times headroom plus floor thickness add 75 mils. It's pretty easy to, it's, a, it's pretty easy, but it's always run over rise. It's not rise over run. We're going to do rise or run divided by rise times our, head, or times our headroom plus our floor thickness and add 75. So when we're figuring this out, what do we do first if we're thinking bed mass here? Uh, What's bed mass? All right, so we do what's in our brackets first, right? Yeah. So headroom plus floor plus floor thickness gives us two thousand two hundred twenty-seven. 2,227? Yeah. And then we have our run over our rise, right? Okay, so run divided by rise gives us 1.54. 1.54 times 2227. 34, 34, 86. Pardon me? 34, 34, 86. That gives us our finished opening. Um, now, what are we going to add to it? 75. That gives us a rough opening of 3509. 3509.86? Yeah, 35. So 35. <coughs> so if life was great and everything was grand and we had all this room to deal with and all this room to work with, um, and we didn't have um, we didn't have a landing in here that we'd have to add on to make our stairwell bigger. Uh, 3510 would be our stairwell rough opening. Um, you got to remember though, when we're doing our rough openings, 
it's always run over rise, and then you need your minimum headroom plus your floor thickness. Uh, but if we're building to minimums, what are we building? Yeah, worst possible house you can build allowed. <laughs> we're allowed to build that house. We're allowed to build those stairs. We're allowed to insulate to the minimums. We're allowed to do whatever we want to do to the minimums. But remember, that's the worst possible allowable house in BC. But it's still a still a good house. So what do you allow for your headroom then when you do your calculations? Well, I always allow. So I try to allow seven feet. Right. It's hard because um, a lot of times <laughs> there's a hallway right here. And uh, so sometimes we're right at minimum. By the time we add, by the time our drywall's on here and we've angled this up because uh, there's no way, <laughs> sometimes you have to angle your floor system up in order to achieve this headroom down here. Or you come back, you're, there, you're right here, you're angling this up here, and you're putting, you're moving things back a little bit, you're trying to, um, you're trying to achieve the most headroom possible because there's nothing worse than going down a set of stairs at six foot four and three quarters uh, when you're trying to pull a bed downstairs or whatever, right? You're gonna end up wrecking something. So I try to get seven feet. Um, yeah. Uh, just when you're done. Oh, I try to get seven feet, and a lot of times you're gonna have to shrink your your tread up to get that. Yeah. So your your floor thickness. That's that's including your joists, your sheeting, finished floor, finished drywall. So you need to know what's going on. So if you have Oh, drywall on the bottom. So yeah, drywall under here, yep. Okay. So you need to know any anything that's going on that floor, on the top or the bottom, you need to know because if you make a mistake, then you could be out. Okay. Yep. Uh, this probably wouldn't happen, but what if there was a light or something in this room? Like a light? Probably wouldn't put it there. You yeah. wouldn't put it there. Okay. Or you could put a pot light in there. Yeah. You could put a wall sconce in there. You do. Um, any kind of lighting um, that wouldn't impede with your stairwell opening. Well, you would probably put it on the ceiling on your second floor. Yeah, you could do that. So chant on your stairs. Yeah, or in, and two down in the bay, your light would probably be down over here anyway, too, yeah. right in the middle of the hallway. So. Cool. Anything else? That's a minimum header right there. Minimum header is 1950. <laughs> okay. So, we'll take a picture of that. Yeah, go right ahead. You're going to, once you read, open your modules and read it, you'll see it. Uh, one day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's been, that's it. Cool. Um, that's all I've got for you guys right now, or today, or whatever. Oh, so, man. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Hope you learned a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's uh, Stephen will go through handrails, ramps, <coughs> guardrails with you guys. Probably a few more stair calculations through Imperial. Um, some more headroom requirements stuff. Maybe adding some landings in there so you get a real taste for it. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.